स्वयं प्रभा डिजिटल इंडिया एजुकेटेड इंडिया हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू टूडे क्लास इन टूडे क्लास विल डिस्कस ए क्वांटम मैकेनिकल ऑपरेटर दैट हैज ग्रेट रेलेवेंस इन क्वांटम मैकेनिक्स वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट एंगुलर मोमेंटम ऑपरेटर before we discuss the quantum mechanical uh, description of angular momentum operator we'll briefly see how we define angular momentum in classical mechanics and how we can write down its quantum mechanical operator form we know that angular momentum is given by the vector product between the displacement and the linear momentum the vector product between these two vectors r and p gives us angular momentum and we discuss we use angular momentum to describe a system when a, a particular system is going in a circular path pro, making an angular motion so therefore the angular momentum becomes a useful quantity to describe the state of that system when we try to find out the functional form of this angular momentum vector You, you we would know from the vector algebra so we write down i j k these are the unit vectors along x y and z axis r vector has three component x y z p vector the linear momentum has three components p x p y p z when we look at this uh, operation then we can see that okay corresponding to i uh, unit vector i have i cap y pz minus z py plus j cap z px minus x pz plus k cap x p y minus y p x so this is what we get about the uh, as the uh, vector in the vector notation for the angular momentum and here we see this part is essentially since it is along i cap we call this as l x this part we call it as l y and this as l z so these are this is the x component y component and z component of the angular momentum vector now we this is how we define angular momentum in classical mechanics we know that in when we discuss quantum mechanics we for every classical observable there exists a quantum mechanical operator and since we have already defined the class, classical expression for the angular momentum now we can define the quantum mechanical operator corresponding to that so when we write down the operator for lx or ly or lz we would simply use this displacement y linear momentum pz so we know the the position vector position operators x or y or z what their functional forms and how to operate them we also know about px py pz the linear momentum along x axis y axis and z axis what is its functional form and how we deal with them so we will use the, the, this definition to discuss uh, the quantum mechanical proper properties of angular momentum operator but before we do that we first discuss what are very important properties of angular momentum is that they follow a particular set of commutation rules we would first to discuss how what is the commutation commutator between lx operator and ly operator so just to tell you lx ly this is what we discussed uh, just a moment earlier how to write it in in uh, classical mechanics and now we are going to write the quantum mechanical form of it so lx would have ypz minus zpy ly will have z p x minus x p z now we have 
y as a as an operator p z is an operator z p y th these are operators and so each term in this expression is an operator. So, we can define this operator as putting uh, putting a hat on top of it, but since there are going to be so many terms uh, for for the moment I would skip using this hat. So, we just would remember that this y and p z they are operators. So, now when I have to try to obtain an uh, obtain one expression for this, uh, this, this commutation, I see that I have commute, I have to evaluate commutator between two products here and two products here, two products here z p x x p z. So, I can simplify this as y p z z p x minus The, this this computer in the first line can be expressed as these four commutators y p z z p x and so on and so forth. So, I am first taking y p z and took the com, uh, tried to evaluate the commutation of z p x and then y p z with x y p z with x p z then z p y with x z p x and z p y with x p z. So, now this commutator I can evaluate by if I can evaluate these four commutators, but you see each of these commutator has a b c d type of form. So, what I have here is that I have two operators here and two operators here. So, essentially I should know how to evaluate this kind of commutation. If you remember in a few class uh, earlier uh, in a few earlier classes in one of those classes we discussed how we can use this commutation commit how we can evaluate this commutator when you have when you have product of two operators uh, are involved. So, in this case you remember so consider that C d is a single fun sing single operator and I am first going to use the expand this a b product. So, to do that so I have first a plus now I would do for this we discussed in an earlier class. So, this is how we used when we have product of two operators and we have to evaluate the commutation commutator, but still now we have we still have the C D operators which are which is actually the product of uh, two operators and now we will try to expand them. When you do this, this is the first term where I first evaluated the commutation between B and C by taking D out, and the second term will be when I keep C out and I evaluate the commutation between B and D. Now, I look at this second term, the second term I first keep C out and then I would keep D out. Now, if I have A B C D in this form, this is what I have to evaluate. Now, you see that now the expression that I have in this case I am I just have to evaluate the commutation between two operators B or C or B or D A or D or A or C. Now, what we do is that we would use this relation to evaluate the first commutator in this expression. So, the first commutator that we have is y p z z p x. So, when you look at this, so this is my A a is operator a is y 
operator B is P z, operator C is z, operator D is P x. So, in this case I can simply write down A as y. So, I am using this, re this relation of this uh, line over here. So, B C is P z z and D is P x plus A C which is y z and I am I have to evaluate the upper, uh, commutator between P z and P x plus C which is z and I have to evaluate the commutation between A and D which is y and P x. And now I have to evaluate the commutation between A and C which is y and z and D B are P x P z. So, now when I look, look at this expression I see that here I have commutation between P z and P x since P z depends only on z component and P x has dependence only on x component. So, therefore, since these two variables have uh, are defined in two different axes. So, therefore, they commute with each other. So, this term becomes 0. Similarly, y P x also becomes 0 because this is position along y axis and this is linear momentum along x axis. So, therefore, they are 0 and this commutation also since it is y and z. So, this also becomes 0. Now, I have only one term here which is P z z. So, this we already have seen what is the commutation between z x and P x that was i h bar and since, since this is the, the opposite of it. So, it is P x x kind. So, therefore, the relation the value of this commutation is minus i h bar y P x. So, here the commute, commutator of P z z is minus i h bar and I have y and P x. So, this is what I got from the first term. Now, I would look at the second term which is z P y minus z P x. So, instead of writing using this expression uh, comp, uh, writing down all the terms, you would just see which of these commutators survive which of them do not. So, the first term, so we have A, B, C, D. Now, we will use this relation. So, first term requires a commutation between B and C. So, let us see what is B and C. So, P, Y and Z. So, they depend on two different uh, coordinates. So, therefore, they, they commute. So, the first term becomes 0. What about the second term? B, D. So, P, Y, P, X, they again commute that is 0. So, again A and D. So, A is z, P D is P x. So, that is also 0 and A C z and z. So, I have z and z. So, they also commute. So, z uh, we, we have seen two of say the same operators they, they commute. So, therefore, all the terms are 0. So, this expression is 0. Similarly, if we look at the third term which is y P z minus x P z will find the first term B c P z uh, excuse me. So, this this should not be a minus sign this should be a comma because we are trying to evaluate the uh, commit commutator between y p z and x p z. So, we have a b c d. So, first term will require the commutation bit commutator between b and c. So, p z and x they will they commute. So, therefore, it is 0. The second term requires b and d. So, p z p z they commute that is 0. Third term requires a and d which is y and p z they also commute. So, that is 0 and the, fi the final term a and c y and x they also commute. So, therefore, all the terms become 0. Now, we have the final term which is the commutation commutator between z p y and x p z. We will see what we get from here. 
So, we have again A, B, C, D, we are going to use this particular relation. So, first term will require a commutation commutator between B and C. So, P, Y and X, so they would commute. So, therefore, first term will be 0, second term B and D, P, Y and P. Now, we would look at the second term which requires a commutator between B and D. So, B is P y, D is P z. So, the second term will also become 0 and then the third term requires a commutator between A and D which is z and P z. Since z and z and P z they do not commute. So, this term will survive. So, we have to write carefully. So, we have C op operator which is x here the commutation be commutator between A and D. So, z and P z and then we have B which is P y. This since z and P z they do not commute. So, this this term will survive. Now, let us look at the fine five fourth term which is which requires a commutation between A and C which is z and x. So, they again uh, would commute and the term will become 0. So, I am left with the only one term, but I also know z and p z they are their commutator which is simply i h bar. So, I have i h bar x p y. Now, this is the term that survived here and this is the term that survived in the first term. So, the overall when I evaluate this uh, commutator, so I have I am left with these two terms. So, when I simplify this, so I can write this continue this discussion over here. So, I have i h bar x p y minus y p x, which is nothing but i h bar l z. So, this is how we had we had defined L z operator x p y minus y p x. So, we see that L x and L y they do not commute that the commutator between L x and L y is simply i h bar L z. In the same way we actually can write down L x L y the they do not commute. So, this is i h bar L z and L y and L z I would encourage you to do it uh, for yourself. So, that you can practice the how to use uh, uh, the commutation relations and similarly L z and L x that is i h bar L y. In, in our lecture we discussed we derived this relation, but I would encourage you to look at to try to derive these two uh, relations. We, what we see is that the L x, L y, L z the three components of the angular momentum operators they do not commute with each other, but they follow a, a cyclic uh, relation between them. So, this we will remember, but we would look at another uh, commutator property. So, we have defined this operator L as L x, L y uh, as uh, having three components L x, L y and L z. Now, we are defining another operator L square which is simply L x square plus L y square plus L z square. We would now show try to find out what is the commutator between L square and L x. You see that L square is defined as L x square plus L y square plus L z square. So, therefore, to evaluate this commutation commutator, I have these three commutator to be evaluated. Since I am trying to evaluate the commutator between L x and L x square, so I know uh, we in, in an earlier class we said we had discussed that a to the power n and operator a they always commute. So, therefore, this term is 0 and I am left with L y square L x. So, this is a product of two operators L y and L y to obtain this I will have to have 
I will have to evaluate these two terms. And similarly, when I evaluate this commutator, I have Now, look the first term is anyway 0 when I look here L y L x I know what how they commute. So, you see uh, the commutator we just now we derived L x and L y the commutator between L x and L y is i h bar L z. So, since uh, this is the other way around L y L x. So, it will be negative of i h bar L y and L z. So, I bring this I brought this i h bar minus i h bar uh, to the left. So, this gives me L z and this is L y. So, I have L y L x again. So, minus i h bar L z L y plus I see the commutation between L z and L x. So, I know this is L y. So, i h bar L z and this is L y and then final term L z L x. So, that is again i h bar L y L z. So, now when you see L y L z with a minus i h bar L y L z with a plus i h bar. So, these two terms cancel out L z L y with i h bar L z L y with minus i h bar. So, they cancel out and now I see that operator L square commute with L x. So, similarly I can also show operator L square would commute with L y and L square will also commute with L z. So, I would encourage you to follow this procedure and to show that L y and L z they commute with L square operator. We would continue our discussion and define one more operator from the definitions of operator that we have. We are going to define two new operators, we call that L plus operator which is L x plus i L y operator where i is the imaginary root and we define L minus operator as L x minus i L y operator. So, these two uh, operators we, uh, we define now we would show one important commutation relation. We will try to evaluate what is whether L z and L plus they commute with each other or not. So, we see that L z. So, since L plus is defined as L x plus L i L y. So, I have simply And I know L z L x when I evaluate this this uh, commut commutator I get i h bar L y plus i L z L y would be minus i h bar L x. So, I see here plus i minus i that becomes uh, plus 1. So, I have h bar L x plus, so this term I first wrote h bar L x plus i h bar L y or I take this h bar outside and write it as L x plus i L y. So, these are all operators, but what is this operator? I have already defined as L x plus I L y is your L plus operator. So, this relation. So, L z with the commutator between L z and L plus is simply h bar L plus. So, I can also show L z with L minus you 
you should try to do it and you would be seeing that this, this relation uh, holds. So, what we have done is that we have discussed uh, quite a few uh, commutation relation among the angular momentum operators. Now, just to since we defined so many new operators, so I would just spend a, a few minutes in discussing the summary of uh, what we have done so far. We said that uh, angular momentum operator, we can define the, oper the functional form of this operator by using the classical mechanical description that L the angular momentum is the vector product between R and P. So, therefore, since it is a vector product, we have three components L x, L y and L z. We define the L x, L y, L z operator uh, in this, this functional forms. So, where P y, P z or P x, they are the angular momentum operators along y, z and x axis, x, y and z, they are the position coordinate, position operator along x axis, y axis or z axis. With L x, L y and L z, we also showed that defined another operator as L square, which is L x square plus L y square plus L z square. Ap apart from these four operators, we also defined two uh, additional operators L plus and L minus in terms of L x and L y operators. So, L plus and L, L minus are simply uh, positive and negative uh, combination of L x and L y, L x is in the real plane, L y is in the imaginary plane. Given the definitions of these operators, we also discuss the commutation relations between them. We saw one important property is that L x, L y or L z, they do not commute with each other, rather their commutation commutators follow a simple cyclic rule. L x and L y would give you i h bar L z and so on and so forth. While L x, L y, L z, they do not commute with each other, what we uh, uh, discuss is that L square operator commutes with L x, L y and L z. And finally, we also discussed another uh, commutation relation where L z and L plus will give me uh, h bar L plus and L z and L minus would give uh, there is a typo here. So, it should be minus h bar uh, L minus. So, just to uh, refresh our uh, memory in today's uh, lecture we discussed about an important operator in quantum mechanics, the angular momentum operator. We spent quite a bit of time in understanding the, oper the quantum mechanical form of this operator and the commutation relations that it holds. Uh, I, I must remind you again that this quantum, uh, angular momentum operator is a very important operator in quantum mechanics, which has wide range of applications. In fact, we would spend quite a few uh, of our future lectures in discussing the uh, applications of angular momentum operator in different chemical uh, chemical problems. We will continue our discussion in obtaining the eigenfunctions and eigenvalues of angular momentum in our future class. Thank you for your attention.